And welcome back to News On. Let's welcome back our packed panel today. Joining us once again, Melissa Armo, Haven McVarish, and John Jackson. So right before the break, we were talking about election integrity, and we were coming up on a commercial. So I wanted to give each of you real quickly a chance to respond to this. Uh, going to our Democrats, John, uh, I want to start with you. We were talking about this. You said uh, you were criticizing the former president, Donald Trump, uh, for basically uh, making people fearful of that their vote does not count when it comes to elections and that there is widespread fraud. But what I want is for the viewers that are watching this right now, what could Democrats do to help ensure that? Because we do know that fraud has occurred. That we can all agree on, can we not? That some fraud no, has can't. occurred. Absolutely not. That there's never there's been, been fraud been, haven? There's been, there were 16 incidences, 16 incidences in the entire 2020 election of voter fraud. 16. And that's in every local, every state, every national election. 16 out of But you just answered million. But but you just answered my question. You just I said so there has been fraud and you just said yes. Is, we may disagree is, on the number and our viewers may disagree, but you're acknowledging that, that is, it has occurred. So why not that do is things statistically irrelevant. 16 is nothing. We shouldn't even but be talking about But for the viewers, but Haven, people. but Haven for the viewers that are watching right now that believe that it has occurred, why not take action to ensure that their vote counts? Here's the deal I'll make with you. If you support getting rid of gerrymandering, I will support going after 16 votes and pretending that that's actually real fraud. And the reason I say that is in Virginia, the Democrats got the most votes for the House of Delegates, yet they are now in the minority. In 2017, Democrats won overall vote by more than 10 percent, and they only had 49 percent of the elections uh, or of the seats. That is real voter fraud when the majority can't win because of gerrymandering. You go after gerrymandering, All right. and sure, we can talk about 16 errant votes. Which, by the way, okay, five of them were Republicans, three were Democrats, and the rest were unknown. I don't know where the 16 number is coming from. Do you want to just clarify that? And then I do want to go to John because I was addressing you first. Go ahead, Haven. Sure. sure. You, you can look up uh, Department of Justice. They're, they have a tracker on how many voter fraud okay. um, uh, convictions or, excuse me, arrests there were made. And only 16 were arrested. And we don't even know how many of those have been convicted. Gotcha. Okay, so I, I have to move quickly because of time, so I'm not trying to cut anybody off, but I want to give all of you a chance to respond. So, John, uh, there you just heard Haven uh, suggest that that is not real fraud, that there were statistically 16 cases, according to him, based on the Department of Justice's own investigation. Your thoughts on that? So I, I think that the viewers need to understand how elections are ran. They are mostly run at the local level by local elections offices. And if there's a mistake that leads to not every vote being counted, it is generally a mistake, an error by an election, a local elections office. So the focus should be on making sure our local elections offices are operating the way they should. The focus should be that voting is very, very easy, that you know everyone's vote is counted, and that we're not, you know, stopping people from you know getting their vote counted, that they're you know, we're not okay. suppressing votes. So Melissa, I you're... think I, I wanna say one more thing. You know, I'm not a big fan of Georgia's governor, Brian Kemp. Uh, I don't like the conditions he became governor, uh, because he was Secretary of State of his own election, that's not right. But he is the governor of Georgia, whether I like it or not. Brian Kemp won that election. And so I think it's important on both sides of the aisle that we stop this whole, uh, President Biden is not the legitimate president. He is, he won that election, that election was certified uh, and there was no widespread fraud that would have changed the outcome of the election really in any of these states. And so, okay, so I again, think we've got to bury that sentiment as we go into the elections conversation. But but we're not. We're not doing that, Melissa. And I want you to weigh in there. There was a new poll that came out saying still the vast majority of Republicans 
do not trust the election process. So again, same question to you when it comes to fraud and what you've heard Haven say, what you've heard John Jackson say. How, how do we change that for Americans to, to trust the election process? Well, first of all, the voter rolls aren't cleaned up. People received mail-in ballots at addresses that they no longer lived in. We know that. Second of all, Democrats don't want voter ID. That is a recipe for fraud. I voted for the mayor in New York City on Tuesday. Miranda Khan could have come in and voted for the mayor. Miranda could have come in and given my name, Melissa Armo, and my address and voted. They didn't ask me for any ID. When you don't ask for voter ID, it's ripe for fraud. Also, mail-in ballots is a problem. One of the propositions we voted for in New York actually was to allow people to just do mail-in ballots even at the very end of it, not even to have a time limit. All of these things result in fraud. So whether or not you can actually go back and arrest the people, as Haven was saying, that it's 16 people or five people or two people, whatever, if you don't know who the person is that's filling in the mail-in ballot, how do you know who to go after for the fraud? You don't know if there's fraud or not because they're filling in mail-in ballots. You don't know if Miranda is Melissa Armo or not because you're not asking for the identification. If Democrats think all the elections outcomes are fair, then what do they have a problem with getting voter ID for? What's so wrong with that? I, can well, I respond to that? Go for it. Um, the state that former President Trump causes the most commotion about is Georgia. And we all have to show our IDs at the polling place. Every single play, every single voter in Georgia in 2020 for the presidential election and for the runoff showed their ID. And in the past, absentee ballots were primarily used by Republicans in Georgia. But when absentee ballots benefited Democrats, all of a sudden it's a fraud. We've got to stop this sort of thing. I lose. I'm going to say it's a fraud. But John, I have heard, I, I've had heard a number of Democrats opposed to showing, fo you know, uh, a voter ID, any kind of form of identification. I have heard that on this program. Only blue Why? states are doing yeah. that. Yeah, I, I can tell Go you. Go ahead, Miranda, Haven. There's uh, uh, nationwide, there's about 17 to 18 percent of Americans who do not have a form of um, ID that would be acceptable at most in most Republican states that have voter ID uh, requirements. So here's a better solution. Let, let us do automatic voter registration of every American. That cleans up the rolls everywhere. So if someone moves, then their voter registration is automatically updated by um, uh, various federal agencies, including the IRS, um, state agencies like the DMV. Let's have complete voter registration. So every American is automatically registered to vote. That cleans up the voter roll. <laughs> and then at, at that point, then I think you could see voter ID would be accepted as long as that ID is uh, free. So states should not be able to say to people who are impoverished, you can't vote unless you can pay for this $150 um, ID, because that's a full tax. People shouldn't uh, uh, be unable to pay simply because they don't have a voter ID. And now, I know most of us, that seems crazy that that many Americans don't have um, uh, the type of ID that's required, but that's just because a lot of people live differently from us. They live in rural areas that are 150 miles away from their uh, closest DMV. They don't drive anymore. They don't need so that. So let's ID. make it more accessible. Let's ago. make it more accessible for people to get Maybe IDs. Free. We're, we're we're, we're running out of time. I'm going to have to uh, leave it there uh, for this topic. Coming uh, up, we're going to give our final thoughts uh, going back to the election and what uh, we can foresee coming ahead. Is that prediction from Newt, Newt Gingrich correct? Uh, are we going to see this massive red wave? That's still to come. We'll be right back.